Well, hi, all. I've got six o'clock straight up, so that means it's time for us to get started. Uh, thanks for joining us here this evening on this presentation of how to grow giant cabbages. Uh, I have everybody muted right now. Uh, and I'm going to ask my wife to turn the volume down on her computer because we're getting an echo. <laughs> Thanks. So just so you know, we're going to be recording this presentation tonight so that uh, you can play it again or show it to someone else. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Uh, at the end, I'll give you my email address and you can contact me for where to, uh, to see the, the uh, presentation. Well, let's get started. Uh, again, I'm Stephen Brown. I'm the Cooperative Extension Service uh, Agriculture Agent for the Matsu Valley. Uh, but tonight I'm wearing my hat as the past president of the Alaska State Fair. And one of the things that uh, we discovered is that one of the most popular activities at the Alaska State Fair and one of the most widely known internationally activities at the fair is the giant cabbage way off. And uh, we want to ensure that there's always uh, a large number of entrants each year. And so we thought, well, we'll put together a presentation on how to grow these things. And I don't know if he's here yet, but the Colonel, the current reigning champion of the Cabbage Way Off, uh, <clears throat> Walter Chastain, uh, had signed up for it. So I feel like, you know, a minor league baseball player teaching Babe Ruth how to grow a giant cabbage. Well, let's get started. Why grow a giant cabbage? Well, it's part of our Alaskan heritage, okay? Uh, so many people identify Alaska with the giant veggies and the giant cabbages in particular. It will help the Alaska State Fair because the more entrants we have, the, more, the bigger the crowds become. Uh, we currently have a number of exhibitors, but they're getting old. So we need younger participants uh, coming to enter the fair. And the truth is growing a giant cabbage is actually pretty easy. I was intimidated uh, by it for many, many years until a master gardener, uh, Kurt Mueller, uh, took me under his wing and taught me how to do it. And I'm like, well, there's not so much to this after all. Okay, here is the dirty little secret that Alaska doesn't want the rest of the world to know. You can grow giant cabbages pretty much anywhere on the planet, okay? Uh, people think it's because of our long days, and that's part of it, but the truth is most of it is genetics. So the key to growing giant veggies is obtaining the seeds of giants. The two most commonly used uh, varieties of giant seeds are northern giant cabbage and OS cross giant cabbage. And there's lots of places you can get these seeds. I just listed uh, two websites right there. If you Google uh, giant cabbage seeds, you'll uh, come up with a number of different places. They can be a little pricey though. Uh, some places are selling the seeds for about, um, you know, five or 10 cents a seeds. Other places, sell the seeds for as much as a dollar a seed. Okay, when to start? It kind of depends upon the variety that you're gonna use. My wife and I used to grow Northern Giants and we would start our cabbages on February 14th, Valentine's Day, because we used to like to say growing giant cabbages was a labor of love. Uh, if you grow OS Cross, uh, they should probably be started uh, first or second week of April. The thing is the Northern Giants produce huge, huge cabbages, but there's not a lot of weight to them, but they're very beautiful. OS cross cabbages are not that pretty, but they're very, very dense. And so uh, most of the big cabbages in the show will be OS cross. Then there's some people like uh, Walter Chastain who breeds his own cabbages. Well, anyway, you'll start whenever you, whether you start in December, January, February with Northern Giant, or you start in April with OS Cross. Start them in seed trays like you see there in the picture uh, on the lower left. Uh, once the two strong, the first two leaves, the cotyledons appear, 
you'll need to repot them into larger pots uh, and then repot them as necessary until it gets warm enough to put them outside. Something to know is giant veggies, uh, like giant cabbages, will need lots of room. They'll also need protection from the wind, the rain, the sun. Uh, they need a means for watering and fertilizing uh, the plants when they get big because as they get bigger, it's harder to get underneath them. And you'll need a means of harvesting and transporting the cabbages if you're gonna take them to the Alaska State Fair. And by the way, the Alaska State Fair in Palmer is not the only fair in the state that has cabbage weigh-offs. Uh, Kenai and Tanana do as well. So let's talk some more about wind and rain and sun protection uh, because they're big. And if you live here in Palmer, they're gonna catch a lot of wind. So you need to uh, grow them someplace uh, where they're protected from wind. I like to say there's something called the law of tens for every vertical foot of wind protection, like a fence, you get 10 horizontal feet of uh, wind protection. So mine are behind a six foot fence in my backyard. That means I've got 60 feet of wind protection. Okay, you'll need to protect them from rain if you're not watering them every day. Uh, if your cabbage splits before it gets to the Alaska State Fair, it's disqualified. So, you can um, protect it from rain by actually keeping it watered. I know my wife and I water ours uh, pretty much twice a day. Then you'll need something to protect it from high temperatures uh, and blistering sun. Shade cloth, uh, like you see there on the right hand picture, is good for that. Uh, the cabbages, if we have a really hot summer like we did last year, the cabbages will need some protection during the peak of the day. Okay, you've got your starts going and you're ready to transplant. It's very important to harden off your starts. Uh, your starts most likely have been in your house or in your greenhouse. And if you were to transplant them directly into your garden, that's, I like to use the analogy, that's like an Alaskan who uh, hasn't seen the sun all winter flying to Hawaii and laying out on the beach for three hours. They're gonna get sunburned, they're gonna be wind damaged. So the way you harden them off is when you get home from work, put them out on the deck for you know an hour or two, bring them back in. Next day, do the same thing. Uh, and after about a week of leaving them out there, uh, eventually you'll get to the point where you leave them out all night, then you can transplant them and they'll be ready to go. Don't ignore hardening off because uh, they may survive it, but it'll slow their growth. What I like to do is uh, at my site, till in a lot of manure. In particular, I use chicken manure. Uh, that gets things uh, off to a good start. Uh, and then you'll need to plant through what I call a transport platform. So a transport platform, uh, it, it, serves two purposes. One, I create a watering tube that I will plant the uh, cabbage right through the middle of this watering tube. And this watering tube on the bottom of it has lots of little holes so that the water is distributed equally around the cabbage. This is important when the cabbage gets big because uh, you can't get water underneath it. This allows you to do that. And this also allows you to fertilize the cabbage with liquid fertilizer. Next, uh, this is not an absolute requirement, but it makes things a lot easier, uh, is you need a growing and transport platform. What I've done here is I've taken uh, basically two boards and laid them across um, the watering tube, and I've got, they're nailed together here, and here, and then I've got two boards that I don't nail down, I just lay down, and then I plant the cabbage through this. So the purpose this serves is as the cabbage gets big, it's going to uh, grow onto these boards. And that's great because it keeps it off the ground and further away from slugs. Uh, the main purpose is, or another purpose this platform serves is a transport platform. 
what happens when it's time to go to the fair or it's time to harvest, I'll pick up one end of these uh, handles and cock the cabbage back and I'll reach in with a pole saw and I'll cut the root, okay? And I wanna cut it, cut the root to about three inches long. Now, with the help of another person, uh, we can lift up the cabbage and transport it to the truck or van or however you're gonna get it to the fair. So watering and fertilizing, uh, don't fertilize for the two week, first two weeks after transplanting. Uh, the, the cabbage start is going through shock, okay, and giving it fertilizer too soon is not good for it. I like to use a liquid formulation of miracle Grow. I just, uh, I put it in the water that I give it. Uh, and like I said before, I water it daily because I want to keep the soil moist. And again, the reason for that, as you get closer towards harvest time, uh, if the soil dries out and you get an unexpected rain, the cabbage will take up all that water and then split. So here uh, is one of our master gardeners, Marge Mueller, uh, and her, her giant cabbage. You can see she does it in a raised bed. You can see there on the left side of the picture, she's got her watering tube in there. Uh, and this is Marge and Kurt Mueller's other giant cabbages. They have their own form of transport platform. Uh, you can see the boards that are running across here. Uh, instead of covering it with sheets of plywood, they've covered it with a uh, hardware wire. You can see the water tube coming out. Uh, they keep theirs covered with a soup can. That's probably not a bad idea because if you get dead bugs in there and they clog up a hole, um, the cabbage is not getting as much water uh, or evenly watered as it should. Okay, everybody knows moose like cabbage, okay, and your cabbage is going to have to be protected uh, from the moose. The other thing that really loves cabbage is slugs. Slugs in recent years have become a big problem uh, in the valley. If you don't have slugs yet, consider yourself very fortunate. The way you can reduce slugs is uh, till the soil to destroy the eggs. You can do that in the fall and in the spring. Use lots and lots of sluggo. Sluggo uh, is a pesticide that kills uh, slugs. Uh, it's not particularly poisonous or hazardous, uh, but it doesn't do them any good. Some people swear by diatomaceous earth and finely crushed eggshells. One thing I do know that works uh, is to take copper strips uh, and glue them around the edges of your raised beds if you're growing them in raised beds uh, because a slug will not crawl across a, uh, a copper strip. And then this is really more for my own personal satisfaction, but a 10% ammonia in water spray uh, melts slugs. It's kind of like Dorothy throwing the water on the witch in the Wizard of Oz. They just melt away. And when they've been eating your cabbage all day, I guess I have a cruel heart, but it makes me feel good to get rid of those guys. So again, uh, harvest and transport. Here's Marge's platform uh, that she's planted through. And just another view of it. What they'll do is they'll go through and they'll estimate which one of these cabbages is probably the heaviest. And they'll select that one to go to the fair. Uh, some people will uh, move their cat, place their cabbage on a large tarp like this with handles uh, and carry it to the fair that way. I think it's easier just to leave it on the platform because uh, the one thing you want to avoid doing is breaking off leaves. So uh, harvest and transport, if you're gonna enter the fair, you want to uh, enter the fair just before the event. I'll tell you more about the Alaska State Fair here in a bit, but usually they give you a five o'clock arrival time or a six o'clock arrival time. Let's say you have a five o'clock arrival time and your house is 20 minutes from the fair, you wanna go out there at about the 30 minute mark and cut your cabbage. Um, 
these cabbages will lose about one to two pounds of weight per hour uh, once they've been cut. Like I said before, protect the leaves. Each are about two pounds. If you get to the fair and a leaf falls off, they will let you put, they will let the, the leaf be placed on the cabbage. But if it falls off before you get to the fair, you're out of luck. Once you have it loaded up on your vehicle, uh, you want to retain, you know, anywhere from three inches to a foot of the root. When you get to the fair, you want to cut it back to one inch. Oh, and that uh, three inches to one foot of root, you want to wrap that with moist paper towels and wrap it with a plastic bag to retain as much moisture as ever. Believe it or not, ounces make a difference in whether you're a winner or not uh, in the fair. So once you get to the fair, like I said, trim it down to about one inch. And um, this is an example of an OS cross cabbage. Uh, it can look quite small, but it has a very, very dense head. It wouldn't surprise me at this one at this point uh, is probably 20 to 25 pounds. So the 2020 cabbage way off, uh, it's scheduled for Friday, August 25th. Uh, the entry deadline is August 18th. Uh, I will tell you this, if you don't enter ahead of time and you show up at the fair with a cabbage, they will not turn you away. What they want to do is they want to make you a bib to wear with your name on it. Okay, and if they don't know who's entering, they don't, they just have to make up generic bibs and you'll write your name on it. Uh, I think it's neat to have your own uh, pre-printed bib because uh, I know my wife hangs hers in our barn and that becomes kind of our trophy case. Here's the one thing though, there's only one entry per family. What the fair is trying to do is to prevent family dynasties. So uh, in our case, uh, my wife enters the fair on behalf of our family. Because truth is, she's a lot prettier to look at than me. So, well, look there, I've left off my contact information. Um, let me see if I can write it on here right quick. Well, let me just give you my um, phone number. My direct line in my office is 745-3639. Right now our offices are closed because of the virus, but uh, information will be forwarded to me. Uh, if you have something to write with, my email address is scbrown at Alaska, and that's Alaska spelled out. Oh, scbrown, the number four, at Alaska spelled out. I was trying to figure out if there's a way I can write on here. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, Jessica posted my uh, email address there on the screen and hopefully you can see it. And I just want to take a look right quick and see if Walter joined us. Because if he has, I want to unmute him uh, and let him say a word or two if he's here. And I don't see him. Well, anyway, I'll ask Walter. Uh, and for those of you that joined late, Walter is the. Um, reigning cabbage way off champion. Uh, very, very friendly guy. Uh, he's pretty open about sharing his secrets. And um, I'll ask him if I can give out uh, his email. So uh, that's it for now. This video will be posted on our YouTube video channel at the Matanuska Experiment Farm and Extension Center. Uh, again, email me or call me and I can give you the link to that and hopefully we'll see you at the fair. All right, thanks for joining us tonight.